Hi, my name is Connor McCauley, Application Engineer from Saratech, and welcome to our Tips and Tricks tutorial series. Thank you for watching this video on modal frequency response. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful tutorials. If you have any questions about anything covered in this tutorial, please be sure to ask your questions in the comments below. Okay, so today we're going to walk you through a modal frequency response tutorial, and this is going to be an NX12 using SimCenter. And so I'm just going to walk you through the model real quick. Um, these are three separate parts with a concentrated mass um, connected to four bolt holes in the middle here. As well, we have the four bolt holes on the bottom constrained to a node in the center. And so for the first thing that we're going to do um, is go ahead and just run a basic um, solution 103 modal analysis to figure out what our modes are. So I'm going to look at what those are at the moment. So here's the first mode, second mode, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And so our range is about 50 hertz to about 16, 1700 hertz. All right, so we're going to go back. We're going to get into the setup of the Solution 111 model frequency response. OK, so the first thing we did is we created a fixed constraint down here on this node that's connecting the bottom of these two legs here. As well, we have a bolt preload on the four bolts on the corner connecting the legs to the uh, top plate which are both pretty basic um, setups. The next thing that you do um, when doing a modal frequency response analysis is you're going to create a frequency excitation set. So I'll go ahead and do that for you now, but I'll also show you what's already set up. So you're going to go to load, new load set, frequency excitation set. In this case, we're going to change it from applied load to enforced acceleration. We're going to go to Excitation Definition. We're going to change it to Field. And under Specify Field, we're going to change it to Table Constructor. So in here, we're going to set our acceleration over the frequency range. So in this case, we're going to do 30 hertz, comma, 386.4 for the acceleration, comma zero for the imaginary. And we're going to go up to 1700, 386.4 again for 1G and zero. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. Click OK again. And it's going to create this excitation set folder here. Load set, we're going to right click, new, enforce motion load. And this is where we're going to enter our unit load. So you can choose whatever direction you want and then select the node or the point here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this out and show you what I have. So in this case, I actually chose magnitude and direction. And we used a vector pretty much diagonally across and just a unit load of one inch. So we'll go ahead and go to the subcase setup. And so there are things that are defined in the actual solution that aren't defined here, but I'll go ahead and show you this first. So under forcing frequencies, we have both a freak two and a freak four. And in order to choose between these two, they don't show up um, under create unless you change it from forcing frequencies or to forcing frequencies modal. So each respective one is under the other. So for freak two, you would have to use forcing frequencies in order to select frequency four. You have to go to um, frequency modal. So here's the setup that I have. The logarithmic sweep for the freak two, 30 to 1700. And then for the freak four, 30 to 1700 with a 0.05 spread and uh, five evenly spaced frequencies. 
And then once you do that, you'll select both of these and click add to add it to the list, which are there already. So that's it for the subcase. And for the solution, we'll go ahead and open that up. And the only thing that we changed on the solution was the real eigenvalue, changed it to the range 30 to 1700, as well as just turned on residual vectors. Mode selection was left the same, include all modes. And then under modal damping, we put 3% structural damping. And so that's it. And what you would do next is you go ahead and run it. Get out your results. Gotta let that load for a second. So in this case, we're gonna use the acceleration output. And if we wanna plot it, go ahead and choose create graph. And we're going to use the node for the concentrated mass. Start iteration, the first frequency all the way to the last frequency. Go ahead and hit okay. It's going to begin plotting the values. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click Create New Window. And here's our frequency response um, from the input that we gave it. And if you open up this toolbar, you can capture the image or actually save the graph um, as an AFU or a CSV file. Thank you for watching this video on modal frequency response. Please remember to like this video and subscribe.